going on YouTube? Well, we're going to look at a really neat car today. A Peugeot 504 brake. This is a mid-70s model. This is like a 75 or a 76 version. So it had a lot of the upgrades that the 504 got before it ended its production in Europe in 83. So either it would be a 4-speed stick or a 3-speed automatic car. It would have been a usually a, a two liter four cylinder engine live rear axle because the sedans the coupes and the convertibles they all had independent suspensions but this one had a solid axle and uh it was just a hardy car it was known for being very very rugged this is one of the few cars that was able to survive the harsh climates of uh africa asia Australia, those type of places. This car excelled. Very, very awesome car. Easy to repair. Very rugged. Lasted many miles. It was known for durability. But I love the shape of the car. Uh, that's one of the things I've always liked about the 504. It's iconic, but it's also just good looking. At least to me. I like the real solid <laughs> looking cars like this. I love the steel wheels with the hubcaps. I just like this representation of it. The mid-70s is a good vehicle. It's a good European spec car because it has those big headlights that don't have the um, four sealed beam lamps that like the North American versions had. So, And also the smaller bumpers. By the mid-70s, every imported vehicle had huge bumpers on it because the cars were originally designed with different standards and they always had to conform to us. <laughs> when they came over here it was unfortunate that Peugeot uh, the dealership network didn't survive uh, the first big when Exodus there's a lot of French cars that were sold here and they all disappeared such a good car so model car group we've looked at another car from them it was the 60 Ford uh, Country Squire car this is the same exact construction, so it's a sealed heavy die cast body, plastic base, sealed unit. So no, no opening features. But the trade-off is the price is a little bit lower than the competition that would have full opening features at this scale. But the quality is very, very high. Even though you don't get a lot of opening features, the construction and the, the vehicle quality is, is done very well. I love the paint job. There's no marks. There's no flash on the vehicle. Everything is put on the body straight. There's no there's no crookedness. Even the windshield wipers weren't installed crooked. They were always level with the windshield. Front and back. The placement of the tampoing, because this is tampoing for the insignias and the badges. They're all level and in the correct location. You can see the taillights are done really good. We'll zoom in a minute once I'm put it down there's a little dust that attracted to it the other thing is there was no residue on the vehicle no fingerprints none of that stuff very very nicely done car interior full interior it looks great you know i'm thinking that's the automatic but it would be nice if it was a four speed they offered a v6 but it was only on the coupe and convertible 2.7 liter it went from 1.8 two liters they also offered fuel injection and diesel i couldn't really figure out from some of the stuff that i had to look at um if uh if the the wagon came with diesel it might have but i'm just looking at the domestic market for europe like you know the european countries before they were exported because they were produced in many countries china produced it australia i think Argentina, uh, I think there was another country. They all had licensing. The car lasted up to 2000. They made a pickup version of this too. So that was the only other platform besides a base model sedan that got that solid axle. They also extended the wheelbase on the 504 for the wagon. Provided a lot of leg room but more carrying capacity. That's the necessity for the heavy duty suspension. You can see look at the windshield wipers and they also did the markings for the the grill 
up there. So your cowl, it's black washed and it has the little nozzles done. I think it's a really nicely done car. I like that. It, you know, if you don't have any opening features, I mean, I get it. But also the dust doesn't get in there. That's one plus. Because I don't have covering for every car. Let's take a look at the grill. I love it. I love the Peugeot grill badge. That's awesome. You can see how crisply it's done. And also the headlights. There's no fuss with those too. You can see the clips there behind the two edges. But other than that, there's no big post that makes it look like a toy. And again, 504 is done on the, the front as well. Cleanly. And also the body lines are all the same depth. They're not crooked. And there's not a lot of body molding on this car and if there was they sanded it clean you can see there's no mold lines that are highly visible there might be a few that you can find there's no ghosting on the trim you can see the paint adheres even to all the little crevices a little mark there on the A pillar as you can see let's back it up Simple base. I love the wheels and tires. It rolls very nicely. It almost looks like the early Jaguar steel wheels with the caps. You can almost use these wheels as a double. Let's, uh, I don't think I remember seeing a serial number, but there might be on the package. You can see the live axle with the trailing arms. They did have rack and pinion steering. It's got those nice thin European bumpers. That spare tire is an extra wheel and rubber tire. It's not a plastic mold. So I thought that was cool. On the 504 wagon, that little tire would have swung down and like pulled out. So they used that too. One last shot at the rear. Just looking at, I like the lens detail on, on these the model car group cars. I think it looks really good. You can see they even mold the bulbs behind the reflectors. So it's a pleasing car to look at. I know that doesn't open, but I kind of like the fact that. And I gotta. Tires are very rubbery. Some tires are more plasticky than others, meaning that they don't. This one's almost feels like a an eraser. It's very, very rubbery. <laughs> uh, and also. Just as an aside, now I got a car that's from later in the in the time period, but just seeing the size difference between an American wagon and a European one. Look at that. Both supposed to have three rows of seats, too. Look at all the excess. Isn't that funny? Both are great cars. I would love to find one of these. They're very rare in the States. It's almost like the whole network dried up and only enthusiasts were able to work on them because they were garages that serviced these vehicles in the day. But after the cars started rusting and getting parts for them, there is a parts network, but they just didn't sell in big numbers. Hopefully one day I find one, come across one that's decent. So total production of the car, and I can't remember if this is before or after 83, but it led to 3 million units. So that's a lot. So hopefully I'd be able to find something in real life. But And the other thing, they produced a lot of these. So Model Car Group, this is like their second or third run. I think this casting has been out for a while. Um, so I've seen colors in beige. And I think there was like a greenish one. And then they did a French police one. And then they did this current run, which is this gold car with the brownish brick interior which I thought was stunning I like it really like it in this car and they also do a blue with a black interior and I almost like this one a lot better I think this is more period correct to me with the with the color so very very happy to have it and it's nice to have in left hand drive too because it is French look at that next to the mercury so funny alright and also if you need a little bit more information I do have the box there's a person in America that uh, basically is a European operation, but he has a warehouse dis distributor distributor in the East Coast, and he has a website too. So like they tax each other easily, and the, the shipping is local shipping instead of it having to be ordering it. But he has the prices basically of the European 
people. So if you look at these cars on eBay, the sellers in Europe have a good price, but the shipping is almost half or more. But he does it where the shipping is American shipping, and he still charges you basically what, what the price is in Europe. So that's where I get these cars, because otherwise they're very, very, very expensive, but you're really only getting a, a basically like a green light construction, you know, solid axle, that kind of thing. The information, it comes in a box. They tie the car down with uh, ties through the axle, so it's secure. Car came undamaged in the window box, just like the the Ford uh, Starliner or whatever it is. What is it? The Country Squire. So a 60 Country Squire was on sale. I got that. This one was really relatively a good price, too. So I picked it up. It fits in with my wagons anyway, so I love it put this back it's a great car highly recommend it uh they produce a bunch of these i mean they're not going to be completely sold out they should be around for a little bit uh but what a great car what a really nice car love wagons french wagons are great can't hurt that they're, it was designed with pinot farina that's probably another reason i like the car any of those 60s, 70s, European, clean, line vehicles, I love them. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. We got more to come. I got some green light. Got some premium die cast as well coming down the pike. Hope everybody's staying well. Thank you for all the thumbs up comments and subscriptions. More to come. Till next time.